The long-awaited 16-inch MacBook Pro is finally here. And to our surprise, the base model is still $2,400. And from the looks of it, you're truly getting a lot for your money with upgraded speakers, microphones, thinner bezels, better battery life, new 7 nanometer AMD Navi graphics, and finally, a reliable scissor switch keyboard with a physical escape key. So in this video, we're gonna go over some mistakes you should avoid when ordering your new 16 inch MacBook Pro, along with which 2019 MacBook you should buy based on your specific needs, along with which upgrades are worth it. For mistake number one, don't start with a $2,800 model thinking that it's a better deal compared to starting with the $2,400 base model. We actually chose identical specs while starting with both and it came out to the exact same price. So you can save quite a bit of cash by starting with the base model and skipping out on the upgrades that you don't need. There's actually only one way that choosing the $2,800 model right away can save you some cash and that leads us into mistake number two. If you want the 8 core i9 processor, choose the $2,800 model and stick with the 2.3 gigahertz 8 core CPU. If you start with the $2,400 model, it costs $300 to upgrade to the more expensive 2.4 gigahertz 8 core processor, which I honestly don't think will give you enough of a performance boost to make it worth the price. This way, that extra $200 you saved goes towards the storage and graphics upgrade, which I think are well worth it. For mistake number three, do not buy a spec'd out 13 inch MacBook Pro. The 16 inch Pro already comes with 16 gigs of RAM, a six core i7 processor, and 512 gigs of SSD storage at the base $2,400 price. If you choose a 13 inch MacBook Pro and upgrade to the same specs, you're actually spending $2,500 while getting a slower four core CPU and missing out on all the 16 inch MacBook Pro's new features that I mentioned at the beginning of this video. So the new 16 inch MacBook Pro gives you absolutely incredible bang for your buck. For the fourth mistake, don't upgrade the graphics if you're a photo editor. We've tested it many times in the past and graphics did absolutely nothing for photo editing. Now Lightroom has recently been updated with graphics acceleration, but the base graphics is good enough to take advantage of that. Upgrading to better graphics won't improve speeds enough to make the upgrade worth it. So start with the base $2,400 model and leave it at the base graphics to get the best value for photo editing. The fifth mistake is buying too little or too much RAM. Now that you can get up to 64 gigabytes of RAM, it may be tempting to max it out, but most people actually don't need that much RAM. The people who can make use of it already know they need it. So if you're not quite sure, then trust me, you don't need 64 gigs of RAM. Now photo editors should absolutely upgrade to 32 gigs of RAM before upgrading the CPU, because in our testing, 16 gigs of RAM actually limited performance in Lightroom. But for a lot of other people, you may actually be perfectly fine with just 16 gigs of RAM. For mistake number six, if you're a video editor or anyone who renders graphics, absolutely upgrade to the Radeon Pro 5500M with eight gigabytes of memory before you upgrade anything else. More and more applications are getting more dependent on graphics like Final Cut Pro 10, which has recently been updated with a new metal graphics engine, so it uses even less processing performance than before, and it's much more reliant on graphics. However, if you're editing high-end raw footage, that's where the processor really comes into play. So make sure you're getting the eight core CPU for raw codecs. What's really great about the 16 inch MacBook Pro is that the best graphics is available with the base $2,400 model compared to the old 15 inch MacBook Pro where you had to start with the more expensive $2,800 model to even gain access to the best Vega 20 graphics option, saving video editors a massive $550 to get the best graphics. And finally, for mistake number seven, don't overspend on storage which can be the most expensive upgrade out of all of them. This year, Apple has given us 512 gigs of storage at the base $2,400 price, which you used to have to pay an extra $200 for, so it's such a great value. And with the 15 inch MacBook Pro, you used to have to pay $400 to upgrade from 512 gigs of storage to one terabyte, and now it's only $200, so I'd say that it's definitely worth the price. The craziest thing is that you can upgrade from 512 gigs of storage to eight terabytes for $2,400, whereas it used to cost $2,800 to go from 512 gigs to only four terabytes of storage. And now four terabytes is only $1,200, which is a massive savings compared to before, 
but to be completely honest, a lot of people should be totally fine with just one terabyte of storage, so only upgrade to more than that if you absolutely know that you need it. So with all those purchasing mistakes out of the way, let's get into our 2019 MacBook Buyer's Guide, where we recommend a MacBook for each specific use case. If you're a user who does simple stuff like web browsing, school or business work, or using web-based apps, we recommend just going for the base 2019 MacBook Air, which is now on sale on Amazon for only $1,000. Now, if you do a little bit of photo or video editing, maybe some rendering, programming, or producing any kind of content, you'll definitely see the benefits of the MacBook Pro. So you should go with the base 2019 13-inch MacBook Pro, which is also on sale for only $1,150 on Amazon, and maybe upgrade the storage or RAM if you have some extra room in your budget. Now, if you're doing those tasks almost every day and you take it very seriously, you should actually skip the $1,800 13-inch MacBook Pro and go straight for the base $2,400 16-inch MacBook Pro. Since it's such an amazing value with all of its upgrades and the dedicated graphics card, which the 13-inch doesn't get at all. Now, if you're a regular video editor, start with the $2,400 model and simply upgrade to the best graphics for a total of $2,600. If you're a high-end video editor, start with the $2,800 model, then upgrade to 32 gigabytes of RAM and the best graphics for a total of $3,300. If you're a regular photo editor, start with the $2,400 model and simply upgrade to 32 gigabytes of RAM for a total of $2,800. The six core CPU will actually be fine for you. Now for high-end photo editors, start with the $2,400 model, then upgrade to the best 2.4 gigahertz processor and upgrade to 32 gigabytes of RAM for a total of $3,100. Now, if you really want to upgrade graphics for the best Lightroom graphics acceleration, you can, but make sure it's the last thing you upgrade. I chose 32 gigs of RAM because I actually think 64 gigabytes of RAM is overkill for photo editing, unless you're working with tons of layers and you know 32 gigs isn't enough. I personally feel like 64 gigs of RAM is more for people who are running virtual machines and stuff like that. And of course, you choose the amount of storage you want for each of these MacBooks because it's totally reliant on how much you think you need. We've already ordered two of these 16-inch MacBook Pros, which we should receive in two days. So if you're not already subscribed, click that circle above to see our upcoming comparison videos. If this video helped you out, make sure to tap that like button below. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.